Anyone who has checked out some of the older reviews on my channel will probably know, because I've said it a number of times, that I love movies, not just horror films, but also thrillers as well, that take a very simple concept, or maybe a single location with hardly any characters, and turn that into a fantastic, entertaining ride. Maybe they have great visuals, great characters, they do something really great with the story, or just take that simple idea and make it really fun. Movies like Rope, Splinter, The Thing even, and plenty of others, some of which I've talked about on the channel, which, ironically enough, don't tend to get that much exposure for the most part. Obviously some, like Carpenter's The Thing, are held in very high regard, but there are plenty of others. Funnily enough, especially in that simple, one location kind of premise, that really don't do that well. And I don't understand why. Maybe people want more to be going on, but for me, I love cleverness through simplicity. That really impresses me, it really entertains me, and some of my favourite movies are like that. I would put this movie, Isolation, in that category as well. This is a movie which I heard nothing about. I have never heard anyone talk about it before I watched it. I saw it mentioned, I think, in a trailer at the start of another low-budget, unsuccessful film, and it stuck out to me. As soon as I saw the trailer, I thought to myself, that looks exactly like my kind of film, I'm going to try and check it out, and I did. I bought one online, when it was delivered in the post, it turned out to be a German dubbed version with no English subtitles, and I only watched about the first 15 minutes of the film just to get an idea, because obviously I couldn't understand the conversation going on, but what I could get was the atmosphere of the film. Did it look like it was going to be promising? And it did. From the first 15 minutes, I got enough from the film to know that if it carried on as good as the first 15 minutes, and the atmosphere, and the music, and the characters that were being built up, that I would pretty much definitely enjoy it. So, a few weeks later, I managed to find an English language, the standard version, in other words, and I love this film. It's one of the best horror movies that I've seen in recent years. I would definitely put it up there with other forgotten masterpieces, I would say, like Splinter. Splinter is the gold standard of underappreciated horror films. It is superb. This is basically the Irish equivalent of Splinter. It was filmed in Ireland on one location in a tiny, realistic, muddy, dirty looking little farm. And the place where I live has similar looking farms. It's very familiar to me. It looks very familiar. In fact, many of the places where I live look very similar to that in the film. And so I could instantly relate to that. Now, the film has very few characters, but even though the film doesn't have a particularly high budget or isn't a particularly big film in any sense, it does have great actors in there. You've got Essie Davis, who of course was also in The Babadook, another one of my personal favourite horror films. You've also got John Lynch playing the farmer and the owner of the farm. You've got side characters even like Ruth Nager and Sean Harris as travellers who have turned up on his farm and initially they're a nuisance but they become side characters in the movie as well. And the great thing about a movie which has hardly any characters involved is that by definition it makes them all important. Even characters like Ruth Nager and Sean Harris, who are definitely side characters, you still care for them, and they're still very much involved in the plot. Whereas in a much bigger movie, by definition, the side characters tend to get pushed, well, just that, to the side. Whereas in a movie like this, when you've basically only got five main characters or so to work with anyway, each of them has a great amount of screen time, a great amount of use in the film, and a significant amount of importance to the plot. Now, speaking of the plot, of course, I'm not going to spoil anything, but the essential concept behind Isolation is a similar kind of story to stuff like Splinter or The Thing, but with kind of a farming twist on it. Now, put very simply, it's a monster film about mutated cows. That's not a spoiler, that's what it's about. Now that sounds awful. That sounds like some cheap, cheesy B-movie, like something that you'd never want to watch twice, and maybe even not watch the first time. It really isn't. This movie is done very well. It takes itself very seriously, it's got great actors in there, great music, I love the cinematography and the visuals of the film. 
It has a beautifully bleak look to it with washed out colour and just not necessarily a bad looking environment, but just a used environment. It's a farm. It's a working farm. It's not designed to look great. It's designed to serve a purpose. And that's very much what it looks like. The world looks lived in, partially because it is a real farm. And the fact that it is all in that one location, of course, different parts within the farm, but one essential location instantly made me love it. The fact then that the story is great, the characters are fantastic, and the way it tells its relatively simple story was done so well made me really happy when I finally got to watch the whole film and actually understand what they were saying because it was in English. I would definitely say that Isolation is in my top 10 favourite horror films. It really is, for me at least, that good. I would put this on par, as I said, with movies like Splinter and some others as well that really do deserve to be talked about more than they are. In the case of this film, it's not really talked about at all from anyone that I've talked to about movies or listened to about movies. I've never heard the name come up once, and that's kind of understandable. It does seem to be a bit more of a TV movie, not in terms of quality, but in terms of the companies behind it. The budget seems much lower, you won't have heard of most of the backers of the film, and so it just didn't get the exposure that it really justly deserves. Now as far as the story, getting back to that, as I said, put simply it's about monster cows, if you will, but the concept behind the film takes what could be that ridiculous idea and actually makes it very serious, very believable, and not necessarily terrifying, depending on how much horror you've seen, but definitely effective. I personally found the atmosphere in the film in particular, even before the horror starts to kick off, to be very effective. It's got a beautiful atmosphere in the film, it's dense, you can just tell there's something bad coming for the characters and it just builds on that feeling all the way through. There's very little lightness in the film. There are no jokes, there is no comedy that particularly stood out that I could remember. It's a bleak, serious, but at the same time highly enjoyable survival horror film. So what about the scores? Well first of all for the story and plot, I'm going to give Isolation a 7, which is pretty high. I do give a fair amount of movies around a 6 to an 8, that tends to be my kind of area for most movies, and the reason why I'm giving this one a 7 is because although the story is very simple, the plot is very simple, at the same time what they do with it to create an atmosphere with the story and everything put together, the visuals, the audio, the characters, all that kind of stuff, is really well done. So much better than it easily could have been, and to be honest, even better than I was realistically expecting it to be. So for me, it's easily a seven overall. It was very well done, and for me, it just covers exactly what I want from a film like that. Simple premise, one location, not many characters, and great atmosphere. And speaking of those characters, that is of course our next category. The characters, the motivations behind them, the way they were portrayed by the actors. And for that, again, I'm actually going to give Isolation another 7. Because although the characters aren't necessarily the most amazing, or you don't get hardly any backstory to most of them, you do for a couple, but not for most. But in movies like this, you don't really need as much backstory. Movies like this feel more like a moment in time, than a broad arching story which has a, a massive character arc or a hero's journey. It's just not that kind of film. It's more like you're just looking as a fly on the wall in a moment in time in a less than desirable situation. And that in itself is another kind of film which I really enjoy watching. So for me it's easily a 7 out of 10. The characters are great, the actors that they got in the roles were fantastic, and another thing that I liked about the film is that they deliberately chose people who aren't ugly, certainly not, but they look real. They don't look like stereotypical movie star kind of roles. They look like real people. They're not dolled up, if you will. They look dirty. They look like working people, which is exactly what they're supposed to be. And they look like real people. They look like you could walk out the door and see people who look like them anywhere, at least here in the UK. So for me, it's definitely a seven as far as characters go. As far as the visuals, counting in more than just special effects, 
I'm going to give the film a 10, and it's an easy 10. And as I said, that's not just down to the special effects, makeup, that kind of thing, because that was good for the most part. There were some aspects of the practical effects which I didn't enjoy as much, but I didn't dislike any of them. At the bare minimum, the effects were good enough, and in some occasions, I would say they were great. And although it doesn't have as much special effects heaviness as something like Splinter or The Thing, certainly nowhere near The Thing, it has enough to propel the story and it makes the moments where you do see special effects in the movie, such as makeup, practical effects, that kind of thing, all the more effective. And you look forward to those scenes, they're well done. Again, the atmosphere drives that kind of tension in the film. It's not a jump scare kind of horror film. There may have been one or two jump scares in there, but that's not what it's about. It's more about an atmosphere of just impending dread and doom. And it does that really well. And going back to the visuals in particular, the reason why I'm giving it such a high score of 10, even though it doesn't necessarily have the best animatronics or puppeteering that I've ever seen, is because the effects that were used were very good, but also just the overall look of the film. The shots in the movie, the colour palette, the style of shooting the film. I have to say, I really loved it all. It wasn't a beautiful film in a traditional way, but it was kind of beautiful in a realistic, run-down kind of way. And even right from the start of the film, as far as the opening credits even, the style of the film immediately took me into the world. I loved it. So for me, it's not a traditional 10 out of 10, but I do definitely think it's deserving and worthy of a 10 out of 10. As far as the audio, the soundtrack, the music, the sound effects, the sound design, I'm going to give it an 8, which is pretty high. And although it doesn't necessarily have as many audio effects, sound effects, etc. as something like The Babadook, it does definitely have an effective soundtrack, effective sound effects. Most of the time the film is quite sombre and quiet in its audio style, but the opening credits, again, the music used there is fantastic, I loved it. And in fact, the opening credits in both the visual and audio style kind of reminded me of another one of my favourite movies, the classic Andromeda Strain. It had a very similar kind of musical style to it, and with the strong, vibrant colours of the opening credits, which you'll see what I mean if you watch the movie, but I really like that. It draws you into the film straight away. And so an 8 out of 10 is an easy score for this one. It's definitely worthy of that. And finally, of course, for the most personal of the five categories to me, the rewatchability and entertainment. Because, of course, that's purely subjective. What I enjoy, somebody else may not, as is the case with any movie. And for me, I'm going to give Isolation a 9. And I had to deliberate for a while. It was definitely an 8 or above. But at the same time, I don't necessarily think it deserves a full 10. I love the film, but it's not necessarily as rewatchable as something like The Thing or Splinter, or The Babadook, that kind of thing. It definitely has rewatchability, and it was very entertaining, and I was very happy with every aspect of the experience of the film. And, trust me, it's not a film that you can predict. There are certain things that happen which you don't expect to. You really don't expect to. And I love that. Especially in a genre such as horror, where things do have a tendency to become very formulaic. So seeing characters and situations that aren't familiar is a great experience to have. Especially in, not necessarily new films, because this movie is over a decade old, but newer horror films. So overall for me, it's a 9 out of 10 in terms of entertainment and also factoring in the rewatchability. And that means that overall, I'm giving Isolation a very very respectable score, in fact, of 4.1 out of 5, which, as I said, is a very high score. One of the higher scores that I've given to a horror movie on this channel, in fact. And to me, it definitely deserves that. It's the kind of movie which you really need to enjoy that style of movie, as I do a lot, such as, I've mentioned them a number of times, but again, Splinter, The Thing, Rope, even, Frozen, Freezer, those movies that take place in a very confined location that you can't get away from with a creative monster or creature and great characters. It ticks all of those boxes, has great visuals, great audio, and I really enjoyed the journey. So overall for me, it's definitely a 4.1 for this film, and I would 
it pretty much goes without saying, recommend checking it out. It may be more difficult for some people to find a copy of the movie, but if you do have a chance to, I would definitely recommend checking out this movie. But that's it overall for this particular pick. I'll see you guys next time, and as always, thanks for watching.